Hello everyone, I am Abhinash Banerjee and you are watching Achievers Biology. Today we will discuss about the coronavirus and its worldwide traumatic conditions. We have already studied the basic structure and history of coronavirus. Today we will discuss about the replication of the virus in the body, as the host body, as well as its epidemiology which the virus acts into the cell now how it develops the disease condition or syndrome condition also we will study about the diagnostics activity of this uh, coronavirus how the diagnosis of this coronavirus is being taken off so let's see now if we study the viral replication as well as the epidemiology of this SARS-CoV-2 we will see that the virus can be entered into our body from the environment by respiratory droplets or by touching the surface containing COVID-19 virus. It enters into our body in the respiratory tract and first resides for a few days in the pharynx or the nasal surface. After entering through the bronchus and through the bronchioles, it direct enters into the alveolar cells. In the alveolar, there are two types of cells. One is type 1 cell and type 2 cell. Type 1 cell is mainly for the respiration purpose and type 2 cells is responsible for the secretion of the surfactant protein within the alveoli to decrease the surface tension and to collide the alveolar wall. The ACE2 that is the angiotensin converting enzyme type 2 enzyme receptor is present on the type 2 pneumocytes of the alveoli. So as we discussed earlier the S protein attached with the ACE2 receptor is gently enters into the host type 2 cell. After the after entering into it it closed through endosome and on the activity of the protease enzyme the virus opens its structure releasing its RNA and the other proteins. After the release of the RNA it works in double wave pattern. Firstly it uses the RNA dependent RNA polymerase of the host cell and produces more RNA. On the other hand, the RNA translates in the general translation procedure with the help of the host endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi complex to produce the protein. Basically in this process, the uh, ribosome present on the endoplasmic reticulum more precisely on the rough endoplasmic reticulum produces the protein and it is being modified with the specific protein structure in the Golgi complex and the formation of the COVID-19 new viruses after that it is being released from the body from the host cell the type 2 cell and after releasing there are pneumatic macrophages the alveolar macrophages present on the alveoli which are being triggered it will release IL-2, IL-6, TNF alpha. On the release of this, this cytokines, that is the cytokine storm, forms. It enters into the endothelial cell in the bloodstream. It increases the capillary and the endothelial cell contraction, forming the vasodilation of the vessels which increases the capillary permeability plasma flows out into the interstitial space compress the alveoli and some fluid enters into the alveoli causing alveolar edema which increases the surfactant production so there is a mass formation occurs here this surfactant 
increases the surface tension as well as the collapsing pressure. If we uh, walk through the P equals to 2T by R formula, we will easily understand this. After, after the increase of surface tension and collapsing pressure, alveolar collapses occurs, which causes the hypoxema or intestinal interstitial edema. So respiratory breathing problem occurs. On the other hand, the inter, uh, inflammatory mediators, mediators that is the cytokines were released from the macrophage previously we have seen, it's pull, pulling the neutrophils from the blood vessels to destroy the uh, viruses. This neutrophil releases proteus that is the H2O2 hydrogen peroxide and the reaction of the O2 species, reacting O2 species. This damages type 1 and type 2 cell. To destroy the virus, this uh, oxidative reaction occurs and with the virus type 2 cells are also been, type 1 and type 2 cells are also been destroyed, damaging. This alveolar damage leads to damaging new pneumatic cells on the alveolar cavity, which also increases hypoxemia and cough production of the liquid, cough of production of the liquid occurs, which uh, exhale out and the, also with this pneumonia occurs. This IL-2 and IL-6 where previously we have discussed releases, which travels to the blood, through the blood and to hypothalamus, which releases postaglandin by PG2 cells. It increases body temperature. So fever occurs. So this is the symptoms which I am discussing. Previously I have discussed in the hypoxema, then the pneumonia and now the fever symptoms occurs in that way. Also the low blood pressure of oxygen occurs as then the surface, alveolar surface is blocked. So oxygen is not able to enter into body easily. So this partial pressure releasing, par uh, decreasing partial pressure of oxygen stimulates the chemoreceptor triggering the stimulus reflex. It stimulates the sympathetic nervous system which increases heart rate as well as the respiratory rate. So inflammation of lung causes the systematic inflammatory response syndrome which increases the capillary permeability with new systematic circulation. Fluid so start leaking out and accumulates in the tissue surface. Vasodilation occurs, blood volume decreases. Total peripheral resistance drops, blood pressure became high, hypotension occurs, multi-system organ failure occurs due to this. So basically two organs are mostly affected that is the kidney and the liver. In that case the kidney releases more creatinine and the blood urinary pain. So creatinine level highs. In the liver not enough blood flow occurs. So AST, ALT, bile, and acute phage proteins that is the CRP, fibrinogen and IL-6 also became high. Then there's a question that occurs is why the lung appears to be the most vulnerable target organ. A lung having the vast surface area that highly susceptible for inhaling the virus. Secondly, in the lung tissue of adults, almost 83% of AC2 expressing cells are present that is the alveolar type 2 epithelial cell. So the reservoir for viral inhalation occurs and thirdly the AC2 expressing cells have highly high level of multiple viral process related genes including regulatory genes, viral life cycle, viral processes, viral assembly, viral genome replication. So it facilitates triggers as also it is accurate, acute specific site for the coronavirus replication. There are other 
places occurs in the body where the expression of AC2 receptor found uh, it's mainly in the extrapulmonary tissues where in the heart kidney endothelium as well as in the intestine so there is a later uh, symptoms may be occurs and uh, there may be a case of fecal oral transmission but what resist it's now is that the whenever the virus enters into the body uh, in the digestive tract it surely destroys in the stomach acl so it's doesn't able to just enter into the fecal oral route but the virus is so triggerly and efficiently mutated itself so there may be a chance in the fecal oral transmission occurs in the diagnostics of covid-19 patient having the symptoms of fever more or equal to 104 degree fahrenheit having cough shortness of breathing uri symptoms gastrointestinal symptoms etc etc so on that having the symptoms patient go to the doctor doctor having the clinical history of the symptoms the clinical history uh, basically having all these symptoms also doctor may have getting some tests and if he is sus sus suspecting that it will be a covid-19 case so it will definitely specifies to the covid-19 related tests in that cases uh, the covid-19 there may be other symptoms like crp esr il6 ldh d dimer ferritin all this level will be high ast alt will be also high so doctor if doctor having this uh, able to get this uh, test result it will be also be uh, specific for him to uh, getting the tests for it. in the specific state uh, tests for covid-19 there are rt pcr nucleic acid amplification test is the nat and serological tests are there although the rt qpcr is a uh, pcr polymerase reaction is a highly sensitive test for this sars cov2 virus it has some limitations it is getting swab from the nasal cavity of this patient rt qpcr requires high quality nasopharyngeal swabs which must have certain amount of viral rna but the viral rna varies between patients also on the timing of the collections there are some cases of false negative also obtained in this rt qpcr but in case of serological tests the igg igm serological tests also offer some advantages it may be done with the whole blood or serum but uh, you have to collect this blood on set of the viral infection there must have antibody development into the body so in this igm test there uh, is not need of the specific amount of viral rna specimens in rt qpcr serological test uh, serological test can also detect infections because viral specific antibodies can persist in the blood for several weeks or months but igg igm tests also have some limitations because uh, there is a slow pace rate for this sars cov virus also igg igm and igg is uh, almost developing into the patient blood simultaneously uh, in the same time so there is a variation which the reason is not still known for others i have given you this chart uh, if we detect the whole antibody that is the igg igm as well as with this iga which is present in the mucus surface there may have a chance to get better results as 20 to 80% of covid-19 cases are estimated to be asymptomatic